Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Demonstrating Implementation Excellent Stream of SNOMED CT Expo 2022. Those in the room, I have to read this for online sessions every time. I'm not trying to sell myself four times. Um, my name is Ian Spires, and I'm a Terminology Education Specialist at SNOMED International. All questions will be answered at the conclusion of the presentation. Online attendees, please use the Q&A box to type your question, and we have a microphone for those people in the audience. So I would like to introduce Pim, who's going to talk about patient-friendly terms in SNOMED CT, the Netherlands approach. Yes, thank you, Ian. Thank you all here, bearing with me for the coming uh, 20 minutes or so. Um, oh, cannot jump too much in this one. Um, this is me. I, I, my name is Pim Volkert. Um, I'm from the Netherlands. and um, My background is health IT since 1997 almost. Um, but my hobbies, I, li I like to bike. And in the Netherlands, um, we have a look at, and I, we don't even have hills, as what they, she would say. It. <laughs> Like Denmark, um, so in, in the summertime, this I took this. Uh, I didn't took, take the picture, but somebody else took the picture. This, this, uh, you know where, where this is. Who does not know where this is? It's, it's a Mont Ventoux in France. So um, we don't have mountains in the Netherlands. So if you want to do a mountain, you just better do a proper one. So this is the Mont Ventoux. So I went up that hill and, and and it went very well. But when I came back to the hotel, I felt a little. It hurt it in my back, and 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 it didn't stop. So when I was home, I I, I actually went to, uh, to to the doctor, to the GP, and then she asked a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of, lot of questions, and 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 uh, and then she filled in something uh, lumbalgia, something very fast. I couldn't I could hardly hear what she was saying, and and uh, okay, and and then what what happened then? So because she had a, a nice new EHR and uh, electronic health record for look electronic medical records and when I, when I got home uh, I, I opened up my my PHR uh, and could see lumbalgia it's it's a lower back pain and it even explains what it is because so, usually if patients go to a doctor uh, how much do they remember what's being said in that room 20 percent max and the rest uh, all excitement and they forget all about it and at home you can read quietly what, what what's what's his, what it is so, um, so in my PHR, personal health, okay, I could see what, what I actually had and, and I was so better informed. And yeah, and uh, uh, the aim of my presentation today, the aim of the work we do is, is get patients well informed. A well informed patient can make better decisions about the health. And we work very hard on this and I work for Nictis. Uh, health uh, National Health uh, uh, IT Competence Center. Uh, it's uh, based in Dake. This is our office. It's one of those offices somewhere uh, out to the like we are like with over 100 people working. Um, majority is working on, on consultancy kind of things, advice to the government and others about developments of health IT. Uh, another part is working on, on standards, information standards or more generic standards uh, like uh, healthcare information models and terminology. So I work with my team. Uh, I'm, I'm a team lead of the terminology center and the couple of them are in the back. So raise your hands, team uh, mates. Yeah, you probably already know them, but um, I'm happy that they're all here. Uh, because we have a very good team. We work, uh, we are the National Release Center for Snowmint in the Netherlands. Uh, we work on the national lab code set um, based on Loink and a little bit Snowmint. We have many subsets to maintain, and we have a national terminology server running since a year or so. And we do a lot of training on promotions, but we also have patient-friendly terms. And today's topic is, of course, the patient-friendly terms as a sort of spin-off from SNOMED. And this slide I, I borrowed from Herco. <laughs> so, um, what do we want in, in the Netherlands? So probably everyone we, in every country wants it like that. Eh? The, the right care at the right place and empower the patients, um, give them good information, but also empower the professionals. Both, both need good information to make better decisions. 
And sometimes the decision can be no treatment because of all the consequences of a treatment, but you need to be informed to know what the consequences are. How, so how can we uh, inform those patients? And Kate had a similar, um, um, similar uh, slide. This is our national, um, can you read? Yeah, national core data set for interoperability. Uh, um, it looks like the IPS, International Patient Summary. Uh, probably a lot of countries have similar sets. We started before the International Patient Summary, so it's not exactly the same, but like 95%, which makes sense. So I think everybody needs the same information. Yeah. And hopefully one day it will be 99.9% the same. Um, but these are all building blocks for which are inside. Uh, and we have a sort of policy that, that uh, uh, these building blocks should be based uh, sorry, on, on standards because we are creating an ecosystem surrounding the, the patient. Uh, and we have the hospitals, the GPs, uh, and uh, elderly care, they all have their information systems and they are all connected. Not that well, but they are connected and but they're improving using those building blocks. Um, but they all have patient portals to inform their patients one to one. Each hospital has a patient portal. Um, but now we have also the personal health records. So this, this becomes the ecosystem for the patient. So the patient can be informed directly by the hospital, can be directly be informed directly by the GP, or has its own personal health records. And what we say we, we're going to use in, in, in those building blocks, so also in, in, in the patient portal is, um, I named it the Nicky, Mickey Mouse model. <laughs> and I learned if you tell it once, people will never forget it. It's the Mickey Mouse model where we say, uh, uh, SNOMED and LOINC and IDMP for pharmacy, that together brings, it gives you the, the, the reference terminology, it's the base of the vocabulary which can be used. And on top of that, you need the, 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 the aggregation terminology and we use ICD-10 for statistics, which is mapped to SNOMED. This is sort of, sort of base model. Um, we are aiming at it. It's not there yet because there are a lot of local standards we, we need to map, but we're aiming at this one. And so for SNOMED, um, we translated like 270,000 concepts um, in the Dutch language and it's, it's, a, it's a bluish. And the gray part, it's part of it, that, that existence nomad we didn't translate. If we're going to use IDMP and we already have our own pharmacy system, uh, terminology, we're not going to translate that for SNOMED because that doesn't make sense. So probably everywhere, every country has an idea what needs to be translated, except if you're from Australia or so, you don't need to translate anything. That's easy. But then I come back to the problem, lumbalgia. And not even know it's a proper English term. Uh, it's one of the synonyms I found. Um, how do you explain that to the patient using SNOMED? So we have SNOMED and we have this, this thing. There. So the, 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 the GPA or the, the, the physician had a very good EHR that was able to, to record uh, uh, SNOMED, but how do we get it then the patient-friendly terms? This is what the government says about using uh, language to the patient. I don't know if it's an in international standard for, for for um, the level of complexity of, of, of how you use a variety. We, we call it B1. That's a level that like 70% of the population understands. And it's not a childish language. It's a, it's an, it's a nice way of reading. So if, you, if you're highly educated, it's still nice to read. So it's not a childish language, but it's a, it's a language. That, and so we're aiming on all our description to be B1. Aiming because it's very expensive to have done, but if it exists, we, we're going to have it. And I'm afraid beyond row three, nobody's is able to read this, but uh, this is this is the, the browser, the SNOMED browser we have. We have the international browser from SNOMED International, and we have our own browser because we added some things to it and it's easy to show. And um, I can show you here. So this this is the, uh, uh, the Dutch medical term, the Escalate, the blue one. Yeah, and below, below this, this is a, a green puppet. That's the patient-friendly term, SPIT. And this is the explanation of what it was, what it is exactly. And until two years ago, when we started to use this as an example, I didn't even know that SPIT was a low back pain. 
I, I, I didn't know. I spit is very co very common uh, thing in the Netherlands, and people say I, I have spit. I have no clue what it was. But so I was already helped by this explanation myself. I'm not medical trained, so um, sometimes I say to, do to doctors, I'm not going to use Nomad. You are going, but I'm going to use those certainly use those patient friendly terms. So you can see it in the browser, like this. And this, this is this. We use the browser to explain to physicians, for example, to how how it will it looks like. So uh, a patient friendly term, a patient friendly description. There's several ways how to get there. Perhaps many of you have already seen the the, the presentation of Hugo Hugo Mens yesterday. Can you raise hands? How, how many people? 20% something, okay. Google, you still have something to do later, perhaps. Um, but we use several sources so to, to get our hand, to lay our hands on, on patient-friendly terms and, and, and uh, descriptions. With normal medical terms, you can ask a doctor, but so who's going to say what's the best way to explain it to a patient? So it, we have several uh, sources, and I mentioned three here. It's a Tissau Sorg and Welsang. We started with, it, it's, it's a the second one in the middle is it's a, a nice website from uh, the, the Patient Federation uh, in the Netherlands. So the Patient Advocacy Group, they have a website where all the problems or diagnoses are there and also hospitals and GPs where you can go to and you can uh, rate GPs or hospitals or anything. But they have like, like 300 uh, problems or diagnoses there described. So I think it was 2014 we started with those in the first place. Probably we then had already had the bulk of the quantity of what, what could happen to people. So, uh, and since that worked out very well, we went and continued our work with with Tisau uh, and Welsine actually. And a year ago, uh, we, we started working with uh, Kanker.nl, which means Cancer.nl, which is um, an organization that 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 gives the information to patients with with, with cancer. And it's funded by the National Cancer Institute. And we'll tell a little bit more about later. So we have several sources to, to get it, and then, then we incorporated it to um, um, And if you do this kind of work and you explain to people, and you show the browser, and, 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 but then how it's going to work out, because the vendors, didn't, they didn't build it in yet. They didn't implement it. So uh, we think it's always very valuable to have a sort of demo environment where you can show, okay, this is how it's the going work out. So it's, a, it's completely in Dutch or so. Um, this is a sort of sample EHR screen for a doctor. And you can see a, a, a diagnosis metastase. It's a medical term. And in the discharge letter, which we created to the right side, you see the same. It's a medical term that's displayed here. So the, the doctor only rec records once uh, it, it, with clinical documentation. Records what, and, and then it's this. And then in the second screen we created is the patient portal. Then the word metastase has been replied, has been uh, substituted by outside, which means there's a patient friendly term for it, with a description what it is. And you can see it's hyperlinked because we did another little trick. If you click on that, you go to the website of cancer.nl to get a lot more information about it. So this, this yeah, we worked this out as a sort of demo and um, our cooperation with cancer.nl. You cannot read the title actually, do you? Um, this is a co collaboration with, with, with uh, cancer.nl. So we, we want to have, again, well-informed patients. So they have the best information for the patients and, and we know what's in, inside the EMRs. Um, so both description and hyperlinks uh, for the nine most common oncology problems or conditions and we also are uh, collaborating with with vendors because we have, we have nice nice data sets and descriptions but they have to implement it in their systems and what 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 this um, group also did this is not you see hyperlink i don't know who can read it but it's something like say cancer.nl slash sid snowmed id slash and then you have the snowmed id so the deep link to their website for snow it's snowmed ideas so we can jump directly to, to the dead part. So we created also a, a proof of concept with the hospital. It was the University Medical Center of Nijmegen. Um, 
so we have the sources from we got the information from cancer.nl and 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 of course from our, our snowmat and then we have the Dutch hospital data dhd they have the interface terminology to to, to, to document to, to record the clinical but the diagnosis so they put it in and then we have epic uh naming it is an epic hospital uh, they modified the patient portal a little bit and, and to be displayed in, in, in the patient portal of uh, Robert University. And this is a screenshot of the, of the um, uh, my red belt, my the, the, the patient portal of that hospital. And in and, and yellow, you can see a, a sort of cancer. And I actually think that that's, that, that's, that's the information we got from the, the project Hugo is running. Hugo, this, this is probably your, your, your work, what's in there, but... Um, Anyway, we, we managed that so that it worked. So the, the, the whole chain, we, we delivered the information and it was used in the interface terminology and it ended up as, as a description in, 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 in Epic's patient portal. Unfortunately, they, they, it was only in the test environment. That's why the screen is so vaguely because after a week they took it off, but that works. So now we wait for the, the full content to set. Okay. But we have a, 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 a challenge, a, a but. With Lombardia, they, they have 15 children. So if, if the people are recording one of those 15, how are you going to display it? Technically, you can say you add this to hierarchy and the vendor can use the hierarchy and then display it. That's, that's what we learn, how some it works. But in fact, uh, a, a few or perhaps none of the, the vendors know how to, do, to use that properly. And, 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 and uh, the project uh, Hugo is working on is, is also, and how can you work that out? And he did some amazing work, I think. Um, but this is a problem for most of the vendors. So a, a, a new yeah, PHR vendor or even the, the, the present ESR big vendors, they don't know how to, to work with the hierarchies in SNOMED. So we were thinking of, thinking of working out uh, one of the solutions, two solutions which are possible. And that's that's either you you copy the more general term down to all the children and say well we all we all the same, so we do it for the vendors, including descriptions. Or yeah, yeah, so call it synthesis. So I don't know uh, how it's actually called. Uh, you go, but but uh, this, uh, you you create uh, descriptions based on, on other information. Yeah, but that, that's one. But the second step is all always needed. That's verify. So you need a physician, GP or uh, we can verify indeed this is the correct way right? because you don't want to have wrong information displayed to the patient. It can be dangerous. Um, so you need a, a verification step. And then, we, of course, you can publish it in a normal way like we're already doing it in SNOMED. And this is where we want to end. So the, the, another demo we created to show people the, to the right side, you see a, a, a physician in the hospital. To the left side is a GP and in the middle is the patient. So if, it were, if everything works correctly, then, then the GP records information. Again, it's, it's a Dutch uh, sample because it's a sort of live demo. Malignant neoplasm from Mark. Because they're doing it correctly, they get the ICD-10 code, which you basically you can ignore there, but... Um, if, if the discharge information is transferred to, 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 the, uh, to the GP, the, the GP have their own term, terminology. It's a sort of ICPC-1 kind of thing. Um, so, but in the middle, you see that the patient uh, sees it like this. And in the background, you see uh, the dictionary of SNOMED, you know, sort of uh, because they use SNOMED in the background to, to get this done. So you have semantic unification on the also on the level of the patient. And this is, think, I think, yeah, we, we, we are now uh, able to inform the patient as, as best as possible. And, and we, and I think the community, we can faci facilitate that by using SNOMED. And I hope I, I inspired you a little bit that you can also think on your own country that how can we do that? Because I, I think this is a unique position for Sonoma to do so. With that, I thank you very much. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Pim. I think that was an excellent presentation. Um, does anybody have any questions? 
in the audience at all that I'd like to ask. Just notice as well, I don't have a step, so it's a big jump for me. <laughs> Rob Hausen from the U.S. Um, Pim, uh, I was curious if you could would want to be able to say any more about the choice of IDMP uh, versus uh, SNOMED for medications and any experience you've had about whether you, you know, how that's worked and if you had sufficient content uh, in IDMP available and, and all of that. So, it's a very simple answer. No, I don't. Other people might have. It's it's a it's a European uh, thing. Uh, it's a European project in implementing IDMP, and our national uh, standard uh, the G uh, is working also with them and ISO to get it done. Okay, thanks. It's a choice that we didn't make and didn't need to make. Hello, I'm Marta from Norway. Uh, I was wondering what you did with the terms that have sort of the same um, word out in the population, but they have very many distinctions in the medical field. For instance, there are many types of pneumonia, but maybe the patient-friendly term would be pneumonia for all of them. Have you made a distinction in the patient-friendly term, or do you just use, for instance, pneumonia for all of them? Um, I don't think we made a distinction yet, but there will be a time that we have to make decisions what to, to use because, um, I'll show you, we have, we have several sources which can give us information and one, I expect one day there will be conflicting sort of variants. So we have somebody has to decide what we are going to use. And, and, and so in the process, you have to document carefully what, what's your source which are you actually using. Um, but this for Pneumonia, I don't know if you made a choice or not. Perhaps I, I can ask your colleagues later how we did that. Um, does anybody else have any questions at all? Hi, great work. Um, I was wondering if the clinicians also verify what goes into the patient portal for that uh, patient friendly term. Well, that's that's one of the steps, the verify steps. It's it's a clinician, not the clinician that's really required. So that's, that's uh, we hope that the clinician explains it the same, but yeah, you can imagine that, that sometimes they explain it differently, but it's, uh, it's better than it's happening now. I know that uh, in EPIC, the, the, there's a special field where a physician can type in the patient-friendly term, but they will never do that. They are already happy that they've got a medical term in, uh, so they get the patient-friendly term and description for free without any extra work. I have one question. Have you tested with patients themselves that, that much? Like, no, no, no. But uh, in the project of Hugo, it, it was tested uh, that what is created. And indeed, there's a sort of feedback loop where, where people ask, the, is the explanation okay or not? So that was a great way to do it, I think. Ah. I'm getting my steps in today. I yeah. Um, my name is Ole Vogel from also from Norwegian NRC. Um, what would you say has been the most important driving force for the hospitals to want patient friendly terms? Um, they, they don't suddenly arise. I mean, did this need or did it? <laughs> I have to be honest. I, I, the hospitals didn't ask that much because they're not aware that of the possibility. That you can do it. They look for other ways how to inform patients, and we strongly advocate that uh, document once, reuse many times, and we often see that in the respect of exchanging information between professionals. This shows that uh, by good clinical documentation, you, you can also inform the patients. So one part of, of our collaboration with Cancer.nl is advocate uh, 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 to show what we are doing, uh, so that that the clinician doesn't have to do it nothing extra, but at the same time, the patient is, is much more uh, better informed. Um, so it's a part of marketing we still have to do. Thank you, Pim. Mikko Herkonen, NRC Finland. 
uh, I was thinking about the term itself, patient friendly. So um, if we are in hospital environment, that's okay. Everyone understands what is patient, but uh, what about uh, other, other citizens or clients that are not patients? So uh, yeah, I, some kind of information about how to choose this patient friendly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see me smiling because that was an uh, that's an ongoing discussion. Is it patient friendly? Is it a layman? Is it civilian? Is it the client? Is the customer? We decided patient friendly, and sometimes I'm giving this demo with cancer things, and it's not so patient friendly those cancers. Uh, so I have a mixed feeling sometimes myself. Uh, I rather have my 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 lower back pain as an example. By the way, I didn't have lower back pain, but uh, I climbed the mountain from too. So thank you, Pim. Um, thank you for a great presentation. And if anybody would like to talk to Pim afterwards, I'm sure he'd, he'd take any further questions. So thank you. Um, that NC online session.